cu șase din partea mea sunt bineveniți toți străinii. Eu știu să socializez, respectiv, mereu îmi place să le conexiuni și să cunosc oameni buni. În Moldova veți ce vizita locuri minunate sunt și oameni buni și calzi doar vă așteaptă și sunt deschiși la comunicare. Salut din Chișinău! Greetings from the capital of Moldova and this country has the reputation on and off of being the least visited country in Europe. But in today's video, I'm going to go even further than talking about you visiting Moldova. It's going to be about whether you should relocate to Moldova and probably here, Chisinau, the capital. As you can see, the weather is quite delightful this evening, pretty common here. It's actually almost November and we have this crazy Indian summer that's just basically kind of streaking through the autumn time into the winter. We're kind of bypassing it almost. And even though Moldova is obviously not highly visited and doesn't have very much immigration to it with the Russo-Ukrainian war and for guys in particular looking for a similar vibe to Ukraine then Moldova is a very interesting option because it's sandwiched here between Romania on one side and Ukraine on the other and it is kind of a mix a fusion of those two countries cultures with its own unique Bessarabian twist so let's get into today's video and why you should consider if it's the right fit, moving to Moldova in 2024. I submerge him. Sar experience. So behind me here we have the statue to Prince of Moldavia, historical prince Stefan Chelmare. Also the main thoroughfare through the city center in front of me is named after him. And he's basically the main historical figure here in Moldova also gives the name to the park behind me. So what is lifestyle going to be like if you move here to Moldova, whether you come for, you know, three months or you decide to spend the whole year here? So you think there's still a little bit of a novelty to um, meeting foreigners? Do you, do you think that applies to tourists as well as people who relocate? Mm, I think it helps if you're a more common face. Definitely, definitely. Because people, you know, tourists come and go. I guess uh, this would be Mm, this would probably be an effect anywhere because if you're a fleeting, uh, if you're a fleeting um, connection, you might not have the same effect on people as uh, you might if you stay here for a while. Yeah, so, uh, come back regularly. And yeah, stuff yeah, like. come back regu regularly. Uh, meet the people. If they see you more than once, like in a w more, more than one weekend, you're already uh, in the jig. Okay, cool. So that's the key. Like, come back a lot, don't be a tourist. Yeah, yeah, precisely. You feel yourself like home. Well, now it is November and I'm still in a t-shirt wearing a Moldova one, as you can see, because the weather is that warm here. It is 21 degrees Celsius here uh, in the second week of November. That is not typical. The summers are hot here, though. It's going to be in the 30 degrees Celsius quite a lot. In fact, even two weeks ago, it was still 31 in one of the days. But in the winter, it will get cold. What's so interesting to you about the summer? Sauna. Sauna? Sauna. This is very good sauna. What are you going to do now? Sit here and wait. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, yes, snow and the cold then probably just come during the summertime or at least spring to autumn like now where it's really beautiful weather and the architecture here definitely does have a post-soviet vibe still the city was badly damaged by an earthquake and rebuilt and obviously we have the second World war like a lot of the region which destroyed a lot of the older architecture there are some nice historical buildings in the center and you do have now and especially in the last five years a lot of new buildings and actually infrastructure has improved quite a bit. There was a video made, I guess it was three, four years ago by Ben Rich as the channel Bald and Bankrupt, who I've reacted to on different occasions <laughs> on my channel, but basically his portrayal of the city, uh, less relevant today already, I think, than when he made it. It's definitely uh, had a bit of an upgrade, especially in terms of the underpasses in the city center when you go under the road, they're no longer in this diabolical state in general. So definitely, the quality of life, it's not going to be uh, really like living in, say, New York or 
Paris or London, first of all, the city is, is quite small. It's got a population of about 600,000. So it's going to suit someone who's more into a smaller city vibe. Like if you want a big uh, metropolis, you can go obviously to other cities in the region like uh, Warsaw or Kiev, for example, which are a lot bigger, or Bucharest uh, down the road, which is way bigger than here. So it's kind of got that more small, mid-sized city vibe, I guess, even though it's a capital city. And you can get, I would say, the Western comforts here in general, once you're willing to pay for them. I think it's not some backwater like it used to be. Probably even five years ago, that would have been a problem, but now things have improved quite a lot. So you can definitely uh, live as if that you were in Western Europe. Just bear in mind that the infrastructure is not as developed, it's catching up and you know, they're starting for a pretty low base. So need a little bit of patience. But I think if you're hanging around in the nice areas in the city center, it doesn't feel dramatically limited in what you can get. There's enough restaurants. Uh, the food, local food here is pretty good. Lara, what do we have in front of us here? It all looks delicious. We have a lot of Moldovan treats. That is exactly what it is. Uh, we have sarmale here. It's not only a Moldovan food. It's also like shared in between Ukrainian as well. Uh, sarmale is kind of, as you know, like meat rolls, rolled in cabbage. Then we have platinta, my favorites, and those are with potatoes, some of them, and then some of them are with spinach and egg. And then we have kind of a sauce, I'm not aware what kind of sauce it is, but I bet it's, it goes really well with it. And we have mamaliga. Mamaliga is the most traditional and Romanian thing you can have with a side of uh, pork and then sour cream and some sauce for the meat. I'm not sure, not sure what kind of sauce it is. <laughs> so would you say that this is classic Moldovan or it's um, maybe broader in the region, like Romanian, Ukrainian? It is definitely like a mixture of the region, Romanian slash Ukrainian and Moldovan as well, which I think is the best part of it. You know, the fact that we share tradition and food, so. <laughs> okay, pofta buna. Pofta buna, indeed. <laughs> Local restaurants, cafes, cocktail bars, clubs, cultural events. It's what you would expect from a city from this size. So it's not going to be the big pumping metropolis capital, as I said, but still going to have a lot to offer in terms of quality of life. So rolled up also with lifestyle is safety. I mean, we have the Russo-Ukrainian war obviously next door so far. It hasn't really affected uh, Moldova directly in terms of the fighting. And uh, hopefully it stays that way. In terms of like your personal security, say in the city center, it is quite safe. I haven't really seen any crime, you know, in the last, whatever, 18 months have been coming on and off to this city. It feels pretty safe, night, no major issues. Pretty common for this region, a petty crime and violence. When I say this region, maybe it's a bit different in Romania, in my experience, but compared to say Ukraine or Poland, the Baltics, here isn't really a major issue nowadays in the city center in terms of crime. So first safety is gonna be better, in my opinion, being here than being in a, a commensurate sized city in Western Europe. So that is another attraction is that person safety is not a big issue here. And in terms of like local culture, what does it feel like? For me, it feels a little bit more like the other parts of the former country was in the Soviet Union than it does say Romania, even though people here, they do speak Romanian, the main language this is the official language of Moldova. I just feel like culturally it feels a bit more similar to the countries further to the east, like, like Ukraine basically, uh, than it does necessarily to the west in Bucharest. But it's definitely overall uh, in terms of its uh, development heading in that western vein economically. It is a candidate country for the European Union. That will take a while. I think I saw a sign saying that Moldova EU 2030, maybe that's the new goal to try and get in. By 2030 that is quite ambitious as a former lawyer for the European Union institutions. That would be almost like a record to get in that quickly, but let's see. The границe are very good to do zubs, and many Inostrans come here to do zubs. Yes, it's like tourism for zubs. Yes, it's like tourism. It's true. Here are expensive prices for things, for treatment. It's not like that in America, there's a lot of expensive treatment. Best of luck for Moldova on its mission to integrate and economically develop. Always one of the big reasons to move to this region is the cost of living. Like what is the value going to be for your dollar, euro, pound, yen, wherever local currency you're used to using? What is it gonna get you as a, a lifestyle here 
in Moldova. In my estimation, probably the cost of living here when I go you know, to cafes, to restaurants, to the supermarket, uh, rent out an apartment, it's probably going to be about half of being in a, definitely a big capital city further to the west. Um, yeah, I would say about 50% is a ballpark figure. Of course, that's going to vary depending on what price level you're used to back home exactly. Compared to the other options in the region, I would say here, it's not so far behind, say, Poland. It's probably about 10 to 20% cheaper from what I could see here. I've been quite a lot in Warsaw, in Poland, which is obviously a bigger city as well than Chisinau, quite a bit in the last two years, especially this year, I would say. So a bit cheaper than Warsaw, but not enormous in terms of difference. And compared to Ukraine next door, it's, it's a bit more expensive here. Ukraine is a good bit cheaper. I would say it's another 30, 40 percent cheaper than maybe Chisinau if you go to Odessa. Um, there's obviously a pretty obvious reason why prices are lower there uh, at the moment. That's because of the Russo-Ukrainian war. Obviously, the Ukrainian currency, the hryvnia, lost 30%. At the start of the 2022 invasion by Russia and tourism is not exactly booming there in Ukraine. So there's a lot of like free apartments, well, not free apartments, but the demand for short-term rentals is dramatically down in a city like Odessa that obviously had a lot of tourism before the Russo-Ukrainian war expanded in 2022. So that's what I'd say. Inflation was running quite high here in Moldova. Inflation at the moment here in Moldova is running about 8%. So that might seem okay or normal compared to what you're used to, but actually it was pretty high uh, the year before. So in 2022, when the Russo-Ukrainian war started, uh, they, are quite, they were quite heavily dependent on Russian energy supplies here. And there was a big price increase. That pushed up the price kind of got passed on to just across the economy, but it seems like inflation has slowed. It kind of absorbed that issue. And going forward, it should, you know, inflation is on the way down here compared to uh, a year ago. So that's the price level and what you can get. So pretty attractive from that point of view compared to living in Western Europe or North America, but it does have some competition in the region on that point. Just to add an addendum to the value for money that you get here, in Moldova, like I looked up the cost of living indexes or indices, and yeah, that kind of 50% cheaper uh, rate or stat that I gave you lines up pretty well. Of course, there are some like Switzerland where it's a lot more expensive than the other countries in say Western Europe or North America, and there it's even bigger saving. Maybe it's gonna be only a third of the price here, but I think that when it comes to rent, in particular, the savings uh, and the value for money, the extra value for money you get is like way higher here in Moldova than it's going to be in places like, say, Germany or the UK. It's probably not going to be half the price. It's probably going to be at least third of the price. So that's something to be cognizant of because obviously rent when you're here or buying property is going to be a big uh, part of your budget every month. So definitely you can live it up in the penthouse in Kishinhau uh, for a fraction of the cost of doing so in London or New York or Paris or even in a different city like maybe in Dublin. Actually in Dublin it's going to be quite expensive as well. Yeah, so just be aware of that, that it's even bigger the saving on your rent. So the next topic is not going to surprise anyone because this channel obviously most of the viewership is men from Western Europe, North and South America. We're going to discuss dating here in Moldova now. As a single guy, what is it like dating in Moldova? Well, let's start with the aesthetics. So Moldova, I call it kind of like the Latina section of this part of Europe. Now you could say the same about Romania. It's actually, they're more like darker skinned and darker hair in general. But here it's kind of a mix here in Moldova because historically not only are the people who are Romanian, Moldovan, they're also other ethnicities like Agawus, just like a Turkic group, and you have Bulgarians, ethnic Bulgarians a lot in this region as well. And because of being in, you know, parts of Moldova being in the Russian Empire, and then obviously it was in the Soviet Union, a lot of people moved, especially to the cities from more Slavic parts of the Soviet Union at the time. So a lot of Ukrainians and Russians also moved here. So kind of have that mix. I uh, would say that they're a little bit, maybe slightly lighter skinned than in Romania and maybe a bit darker than you're going to see in Ukraine and definitely than in the Baltics. 
uh, because the Baltics you basically have the highest incidence of blonde hair in the world. But so if you're more into the kind of Latina look, then you're probably going to find more of that here than you're going to find in Ukraine. Although in Odessa Oblast it's actually a little bit simpler, just across the border. And maybe a little bit less the Latina look than you're going to see in Romania. Uh, and on the, on the whole, whilst you might have heard about Moldovan women being famed for their beauty, there's no mythical status that they've been given on the internet like Ukrainians and Russians. That's more a marketing investment point because obviously here in Moldova, it's a lot smaller country. The population is less than 3 million compared to obviously Russia, which is 140, and Ukraine, which is uh, about 40 million people. So marketers basically just didn't invest money into promoting, promoting uh, you know, Moldovan brides or a dating site for Moldova. You just don't have that kind of stuff. So that's probably why you haven't heard about Moldovan women being renowned for their beauty as much as maybe the countries further to the east of it. Uh, but I can say it's kind of much of a muchness. There's just as many beautiful women here from Moldova as there's going to be from, say, Ukraine. And uh, maybe, in my opinion, more than you're going to see on average in Romania. Uh, the big thing is that obesity is basically not a big issue in Moldova compared to, say, Western Europe or North America. People under 40 in general are just not overweight. It's very unusual to see. And that's already a big win if you're a single guy coming from the US or from the UK. Uh, just don't have so many uh, girls who are fat or obese here in Moldova. So that's already a big win. And you also don't have so many purple-haired radical feminists running around. So I would say for the Western guy, when I say Western, maybe I'll rephrase that. So for a guy who's coming from North or South America or Western Europe, uh, definitely the dating options are going to be really attractive compared to back home if you actually spend a lot of time here. Coming as a tourist, haven't spoken to a lot of local girls, not so interesting. Not really uh, up for um, toward the tourist crowd, which there is hardly any of it. Anyways, here in Moldova, just it's like so unvisited. And of course, if you can speak either Romanian or Russian, it's going to be a big advantage here. If you're spending time, speak a local language. That's even though the young people here in Chisinau do speak uh, a good bit of English. I wouldn't say it's as high as in neighboring Romania, uh, but it's definitely amongst the better educated, younger uh, people because they travel quite a bit. A lot of the population of Moldova have Romanian passports, which is an EU passport, so they can travel visa-free and live in the European Union, for example, and they can go to a lot of countries visa-free. So I wouldn't say it's like 10 years ago where speaking English is that unusual. It's just that being able to speak a local language here makes you, uh, gives the impression at least that you're gonna spend a lot of time here. And that's more the kind of values that most girls are looking for, looking for a more uh, prospect of something a bit more long-term than you know, a casual hookup, which does happen here as well. It's not that dramatically uh, different to the West. So on the whole, Moldovan women, on the, the beauty side, you're definitely going to see a lot more nines and tens than you're going to see in probably wherever you're watching this video from, if it's in North or South America or in Western Europe. And I think in general, if you are uh, coming here quite regularly and can speak one of the languages that's widely spoken, then you will put yourself in a very good position to find yourself a beautiful Moldovan girlfriend for sure. So even though the city here in Chisinau is about 600 to 700,000 people, it's not massive, it does have a vibrant nightlife at the weekend. There isn't that much going on during the week and I've actually made several other videos highlighting the nightlife here in particular in the summertime but also in the winter it has pretty awesome uh, nightlife I have to say with a range of cocktail bars and clubs where you go out and party and meet the local hotties obviously and that I'll just link those videos up above on cards down below in the description but in short it has kind of like the classical uh, bottle service club entertainment and nightlife and also you have more kind of hipster more casual kind of places very nice cocktail bars and 
So even though it's a city of only 600, 700,000 people, it is pretty good here in terms of the nightlife. And I've been obviously sampling that in particular with my clients, living the in-person experience for me over the last 18 months or so here in Chisinau. So definitely another attraction if you move here is the nightlife. Again, it is not a huge metropolis of say two or three million people. So there's not gonna be that much going on during the week. But if you're a guy like me who likes to do a lot of work during the week and then party at the weekend, then it's a good option for you. So one of the top attractions here in Moldova is the local viticulture. Winemaking here is like a national passion. It's, you know, it's rare to meet a Moldovan family that doesn't make their wine or their relatives don't make wine in some capacity. Maybe they don't have a huge vineyard, but they are making it probably outside in their garden in some capacity. And going to a vineyard is definitely for me the classic Moldovan experience. I've been to at least five of the most renowned ones so far. Those would be Krikova, Melisti, Mich. Both of those have underground caverns and labyrinths, so quite a unique experience. And then, you know, I've gone to celebrate my own birthdays and birthdays of friends at places like Vineria Poyana, Purkar, and Castel Mimi, which recently hosted a big gathering of European leaders. So definitely the vineyard experience is quintessential Moldovan for me. And combine that with the local food, hearty and tasty. And yeah, it's a great kind of traditional experience here. So what kind of guys should be considering spending time in Moldova? Now, I've come here with quite a few clients over the last 18 months. And typically the guys I help, they've already set up their revenues to manage remotely so they're not uh, reliant on the local economy here in Moldova and even though most of the foreigners I meet here in Moldova are actually based here uh, full-time there's a lot of diplomats a lot of people working in international development a lot of people working with organizations dealing with the Russo-Ukrainian war across the border in Ukraine because obviously here it is safer and as I already mentioned there's very little tourism so in general, you don't actually meet so many foreigners here, but the guys who are coming with me, at least, they're interested in checking out Moldova. Uh, they're guys that are obviously uh, looking to date local women here because their dating options are gonna be better. Um, they appreciate the quality of life and how you know they can get better value for the money here. If you're looking for kind of a mid-size uh, city, like between half and half a million and one million people with, you know, it has a, international airport here not the best service one or the most modern in this part of europe but still you know you're not uh, isolated you can fly to many european cities and obviously a few outside of europe from the airport here in Chisinau. and i think if you're looking for not quite a provincial experience obviously but a smaller capital city in the region then Chisinau is definitely an interesting choice and as i said it's probably the closest thing to being in Ukraine without obviously having the dangers of Ukraine at the moment with the war. So that is the kind of guy that I've been helping. Actually, one of my clients, his parents were even born here in Moldova. So we've been looking at his right to get re to claim nationality here in Moldova. And um, yeah, he had a great time. He actually was talking about how when he grew up with all the, lo the traditional food that his parents were making for him. And, you know, his father used to also talk about all the time, talk about the wine here in Moldova, as I mentioned. So those kind of more homely, provincial, maybe uh, characteristics of Moldovan culture are going to appeal to a certain type of guy. And it's definitely worth coming to check out. Uh, I mean, maybe it's just for a weekend and it's not quite the right city for you to set up full time but it is definitely a good experience coming here uh, regularly. I can say that from my own personal experience over the last 18 months. So what is the typical experience for guys who come from say Western Europe, North America, and even some Latinos when they arrive here in Moldova? Now, a few guys have come up to me when they've seen me over this past summer here in Moldova, in Chisinau, and they've said that they've struggled actually find it a little bit hard to meet local people and also to find the good places they'd actually watch my summer vlog from 2022 here and they thought it was going to be super easy they're going to just automatically just rock up here in Chisinau and uh yeah they would just find all the cool places the local girls will be all interested in them and that doesn't seem to have been the case because 
yeah, they end up having the tourist experience and they have to invest a lot of time to figure out how to integrate here in Moldova, meet people, find the right spots. And basically they're probably gonna run out of time unless they're willing to commit like six months a year to figure all that out. I mean, I basically had to commit that level of time in order to uh, get my intel. And I gotta contrast that with, you know, bringing my clients here and living the in-persons, our experience with me. Uh, because, you know, as I mentioned, one of my clients is looking for Moldovan citizenship and it's probably the city. I think Kish and I were both the most clients since the beginning of February 2022 and obviously the uh, extension of the Russo-Ukrainian war and the big changes in the region. This is the city where I brought the most clients and just contrast the difference because, you know, we're going to, if it's winter time when we come here uh, together and do the in-person experience, we're going to have, you know, we're not going to be queuing outside trying to get into a general admission club. We're going to be going to the best spots and we're going to have our table there and at the best clubs here in Chisinau, they don't want tourists. In fact, if you don't have a table as a guy, they will not let you in and they will not give you a table unless they know you. So you need to be with an insider. And that is what I am known as by my clients, the insider for this region. And you know, we're going to go with a local crew, my social circle and party, have a great time, get to know the city, live some really genuine Moldovan mad Moldovan experiences because here it definitely is attractive especially as an experience for like a week to for, for a few weeks while you check it out and see if it's for you and you know you can try and do it on your own do a DIY but you're gonna probably need a lot of time if you can ever figure it out especially if you don't speak Romanian or Russian because uh, then it's gonna be a bit harder for you uh, to have credibility here in Moldova I'm kicking it in Chisinau with me then you need to go down and apply for the in-person experience because I screen my clients. Not everybody is a good fit for the in-person Zara experience with me. Maybe this is not even the right city for you. Maybe you're gonna do better in some of the other cities that I've been bringing my clients to, like for example, Almaty, the almighty in Kazakhstan. Absolutely beautiful place, uh, incredible nature, friendly Kazakhstanis, good party scene. Uh, definitely a solid option or in conscious what I've described about Moldova you're into the leggy blondes so in that case you're going to go to a city like Riga in Latvia where people are probably some of the tallest in the world and some of the blondest and of course I've been going a lot with my clients to Warsaw which will give you the big metropo metropolis experience right because Warsaw is a city of over two million people and not only do you have the pretty poles there but you have of course the cute Ukrainians and the beautiful Belarusians. It's probably about 20 to 30% Ukrainian and Belarusian in the center of Warsaw nowadays. So they might end up being better fits for you. But in any case, down below is an application form. If you are newer to the channel and my content, probably good for you to go and check out some playlists that I put together. So the first one is gonna be a series of vlogs from the cities where I go with my clients to live the in-person experience. Got some older vlogs as well because I'm not currently bringing clients to Russia or Belarus with the Russo-Ukrainian war. I may at some stage start to bring, you know, fingers crossed, start to bring clients back to Ukraine. Not for right now, but that might be possible, you know, if things work out in 2024. Uh, so for now, it is those other cities, obviously the four that I've outlined, including here in Chisinau, where I've been bringing my clients. And the second playlist to check out is like a series of tutorials for dating the uber beautiful women of this region, the nines and tens. And thirdly, go check out my vodka vodcast playlist. It is a series of vodcasts. There's over 50 hours of content there, so probably best not to watch it all in one go. But if you're new to the channel, but definitely pick out some of them podcast on the topics that you're most interested in because I really dive deep on the mentality and the differences with say North America, Western Europe and here in what I'm now calling New Europe. It's the part of Europe between Russia and say Germany. It's kind of a big area in between but obviously I cover primarily the four countries that I've been bringing my clients to and it is definitely the spot to be if you are I would say personally a single guy who can set up his life to manage his revenues remotely and you're looking for a better quality of 
life than you can get back home, whether that's say in the UK, the US, or somewhere else in Western Europe, North and South America. So I also am starting to roll out uh, Zara Experience 2.0. Yes, but it is limited to alumni only. So only guys who have lived the Zara experience with me. So only guys who've come on the in-person experience, they're the ones who are gonna get first access to this new community that I've been building. And I'm gonna launch that very, very soon. So down below is an application form. And as I like to end these videos with, quoting a famous Canuck, ice hockey legend of Polish, Ukrainian and Belarusian origins. Definitely the apt background for my channel and my content. That is Wayne Gretzky. He said, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So down below is the application form, filled it out and it could be you with me kicking it in Chisinau very soon or maybe in one of those other three cities that I mentioned. And as you can tell, the sun has set more or less behind me, behind the cathedral here in the center of Chisinau. So on that note, I'm going to bid you uh, Sara Formosa, La Revedere, and Pökerind. See you in the next video. Ciao, ciao. Sar Experience.